<coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a tickle. Uh, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another book review. And I recently finished the, the Keeler Reader. Of course, that's one of my heroes on the front, Mr. Garrison Keeler. And the superscription says, looking back at 40 years of stories, where they all come from. And this is sadly a very short book, but it talks about his um, his past, how he became the man we all know and love on um, Prairie Home Companion, and his life growing up in Minnesota, and being Midwesterner, I can relate, because uh, there are so many things that are similar with our personalities and how uh, how we see the world versus a lot of other people. And I'm sure there are people that are, are from the East and from the West that are that are kind, but you will often find people, um, some people, in especially the East, that just, they're just rude. It's like in New York, hey, I'm walking here. You know, you, you get a lot of, no, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, I've never been, but get out of my way. But, you know, you, you've got a lot of that. And it's like, right, I'm in a hurry, let's go. But, yeah, you, you don't really find that here. We're more laid back, and in the South especially, because I have a lot of, I, I've got a bit of a Southern heart in me, because my, my home away from home is South Carolina, but we're, we're just, we we take things less serious than the rest of the world, so to say. We're we're just kind of living on island time, I, I guess you can say. Um, but the book in itself is just really quite glorious, and poetry is just sumptuous in the way it's written. His his word pictures are really beautiful in their simplicity, and one of my favorites is the Owl and the Pussycat. It's just this cute love story between two creatures that um, normally would not be together, and their parents just are full of fervor and um, disapprove of their union. But <coughs> basically, a f anthropomorphic Romeo and Juliet. But um, I don't know. This is just a, a wonderful book, and it's like sitting down with a, a cup of tea and having a nice chat with an old friend that you haven't seen in years and you feel like they never left and at the end you feel kind of sad that it's over but still it's, it's just one of those those books that you just you learn to savor and um, he uh, it's very um, educational as well because I think that He's trying to teach us how we should be humane, and being humane is the best way to approach life, I think. We, we live longer, you have less fighting, and bickering, and kvetching, and, <laughs> and just fewer things go wrong if, if you live life in this state, you, and you live a healthier life, and you're happier. But... He uh, he has so many different stories, and my two, well, actually my three favorites are Pontoon, uh, the Tomato Butt story, and the tale of <clears throat> Zeus inhabiting the body of a Lutheran Minnesotan, and <laughs> all these stories are very comedic in their own effect, but they are just so entertaining, and it's just like I said, he's just this master storyteller, and he does this absolutely <clears throat> resplendent job. And um, <clears throat> what's interesting is when he talks about his past, it's uh, kind of ironic that he really wasn't that well spoken. And he had this uh, flat, well, a lot of Minnesotans have what's called flat effect. And uh, it's like with um, Ben Stein. <laughs> he just have deadpan delivery and you don't really lift your voice and just kind of continue to talk in this way where you have no emotion when you speak and just kind of put people to sleep when you're talking and yeah it, it, no <laughs> no midwesterners don't do that we we speak in such a way that we get a point across but we do it in a polite manner <laughs> We're nice about it. <laughs> but 
but um, <laughs> anyway, he um, he talks about how he just uh, had this trouble and his teacher always thought that maybe there was some kind of developmental disability in, in the way that he uh, spoke and he just he had trouble with it but he, he had help with it and he became the orator that we all know and love him. He talks about how people would come to hear him lecture or orate and perform characters from Prairie Home Companion or Guy Noir, etc. And one person with his wife, he, he came, I mean, just this unbelievable distance. And when he was in the audience, he expired. And I thought, oh, you poor dear. But still, there's this sort of bittersweetness about it. And I thought, well, he died happy. And that's all that matters. And uh, just this tremendous illustration of uh, just uh, life in, in and of itself and what we can learn from being kind to one another because we're called humankind for a reason <laughs> just throwing it out there but um, that's all I have to say it's, it's, a, it's a short book and it's very well written and it's really quite marvelous and uh, <clears throat> if you pick it up uh, and if you're a fan I'm sure that you will just lavish every part of it because as, as for me I'm, I'm reading through it and there's so many things that he writes about that are just so funny and he, he does it in this kind of back not backbiting but he does it in a tongue-in-cheek self-deprecating self-loathing way <laughs> that I think a lot of us can understand. I mean, we go through times where we just kind of have this uh, neuroticism <laughs> about life, but um, but in and of itself, human beings, <laughs> in their very nature, I, I think that they are good, and we should we should be more kind to our fellow man. I think, that, I think that's what he's trying to get at, honestly, and the world would be a much better place and. He he talks about how he 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 was loath to do this uh, eulogy for a friend of his a, a, a fellow um, player in Prairie Home and uh, yeah I would feel the same way if I had to do that but I I mean I would do so out of respect for my friend even though I I don't like public speaking it it just terrifies me but. I would do so knowing that I would give my friend the, friend the proper send off. He, he did that in the same manner, and he uh, he mentioned that this particular friend died of colon cancer at such a young age. I thought, oh, that's so tragic. They should have been able to catch it, but it was one of those aggressive colon cancers, so that's what uh, killed him. Sadly, <clears throat> I forget the name of the man. And unfortunately, it was something like Gus, or I can't recall. I'm sorry. But um, that's all I have to say about this particular book. It's just really quite uh, astronomically written. And Mr. Keeler, I'm glad that he's alive. And he, he gives me um, <laughs> reason to continue doing what I, what I do and, and tell stories. And hopefully one day I'll be published just like he is. But for the, for the time being, I'm um, just uh, another person. But uh, I know that someday my my work will be seen and hopefully it'll inspire just like his does and and then entertain and enlighten and give uh, people a smile because laughter as my mother used to say and she was a registered nurse is the best medicine and it's basically all I wanted to talk about with this particular book in the review um, just pick it up it, it's really quite just a sensational book and well worth a read even though it's very very short. 